In the words of the great Admiral Akbar, it's a trap. You are locked on UCLA, your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey everybody, it's Zach Anderson, the Oxheimer, diehard UCLA fan and D1 play-by-play broadcaster. This is Locked On UCLA. Thanks for making it your first listen each and every day. Your team every day. It's free wherever you get your podcast. And if you're watching on YouTube, even if you're not subscribed, thanks for tuning in and enjoy on the fun. Great debate yesterday in the comments. And if you want to join the fun, hit the subscribe button. We'll have more fun with Locked On UCLA. This episode is brought to you by Bet Online. It's got you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. And well, this one's going to start right in the heart of Tempe in Sun Devil Stadium as the UCLA Bruins take their eh, number 12 ranking, as high as number 10, all the way to Arizona State and take on the Sun Devils, who are taking on their fifth ranked team this year in the top 25, owning one win and potentially with one more game down the line against Oregon State. ASU with a bit of an outside chance to make a bowl. Very much the definition of a trap game for UCLA. And every cynical UCLA fan would think this is the game that UCLA would drop. Should they drop this game with everything? No. They're a lot better than Arizona State, absolutely. But a road game, a rabid fan base that hasn't seen their team at home in a month, and the last time they did play at home, at Sunday, Sun Devil Stadium, what happened? They upset a ranked Washington team right after UCLA had beaten Washington at home in the Rose Bowl. It's kind of, if Arizona State hadn't won that game, Washington might be a little closer to the rankings, you know, depending on how things played out after that ASU loss. And, well, UCLA might have a little bit more respect because that Washington game lost a lot of credibility after ASU, who has already fired Herm Edwards way back after that stunning home loss to Eastern Michigan by a couple of scores, technically nine points, but losing. They put Sean Aguano as the interim head coach. This is a staff that's got Brian Billick. It's got Marvin Lewis, some big-time NFL names, a very stacked staff, advisors to the head coach, and now interim head coach. They found their quarterback with Trenton Bourget, former walk-on. This is all the makings in a storyline of a late-night Pac-12 after dark upset of a top-ranked UCLA team. I think I saw a stat somewhere out where the last three games of top 10 teams coming into Arizona State, Arizona State's won them all. I'm not entirely sure. I saw that tweet from an Arizona State fan, I thought. But technically, the Bruins aren't top 10 anymore because of the new CFP rankings. Regardless of what you think, UCLA's technically number 12 in the rankings that hold the most weight. Would need a lot of help to get to the the top four, but most importantly, need to win and keep pace in order to be in line for a Pac-12 title berth against the likes of whoever wins the two or one seed in the Pac-12 standings. So far, UCLA, for the most part, controls their own destiny. Barring some crazy three-way tiebreaker where the Bruins lose out, they have their own they have their own path in front of them. Got to win out, beat SC, dominate that, whatever. But as I've been teasing, this Arizona State game's been circled on my calendar. Maybe not so much of the Bruins, even though ASU took it to the Bruins last year in the Rose Bowl and beat UCLA by 19 points. They did that a few years ago, back when the Bruins were a top-10 team, I believe, with Josh Rosen. When Brett Hundley was the quarterback, UCLA was battling for a Pac-12 South title berth, lost that at home. So a lot of home heartbreak, not so much on the road in recent years against the Sun Devils, but over the last decade and a half, this matchup has been fairly even, back and forth. And Arizona State's almost beaten UCLA in the Rose Bowl quite a few times, and the Bruins have done so by winning in Tempe. Although this is a team that has not played at home in a month, I've been saying this is a a game where the Bruins should have it circled as the toughest remaining non-USC game for the rest of their schedule. I think Cal could put up a fight on their senior day at home in Berkeley, and Arizona is certainly a team that can come through and make make some noise next week in the Rose Bowl, but... This is definitely the toughest remaining road game. And UCLA is playing a team that's already seen some of the best teams in the country. They played at SC. They played Utah at home. They played at Oklahoma State, who recently was still in the running very much for a college football playoff run 
after before they got blown out. So this is an ASU team that's tested and was on the run to a potential bowl game berth, trying to get to bowl eligibility in a year where their coach got fired in the earlier portion of the season. And you never know, they're three and five. Winners of their last game, albeit against Colorado, in a back-and-forth affair, 42-34. Technically speaking, the offense is going back and forth. Arizona State led by 11 after the first quarter, led by two scores heading to the fourth, and ended up winning in a one-score game against Colorado. The last three games for the Sun Devils, over the course of four weeks with the bye mixed in, have been one-score games. A touchdown win over Washington, 45-38. Two touchdowns, but a one-point loss to Stanford a couple weeks ago where they were coming off their bye, but Stanford was able to beat ASU at home without getting a touchdown. Five field goals did it against an ASU defense that didn't allow a touchdown, but still couldn't win that game on the road in the farm. They go on the road for a second consecutive week. They go beat Colorado, and this is a team that they want to make a bowl. They have to beat a UCLA team for the second consecutive season and knock them out, you know, by saying, hey, the Bruins are playing and they want to knock them out at home. They haven't played at home in a while. They've got Wazoo on the road next week, Arizona State and Arizona on the road, Oregon State at home and then Arizona on the road. So if they got in that Stanford win, that would put them at four wins and right on the bubble to make a bowl eligible, get to bowl eligibility. However, where they're sitting right now, this would be the marquee victory of the season for Arizona State. And what some may say, and certainly already is, a lost season. When you have to fire a coach on the outside, look it in for a bowl, trying to get to six wins. But Trenton Borgay, with the likes of being a former walk-on QB, he threw for over 430 yards last week for ASU. He's got a quick release facing blitzes under two seconds, one of the fastest releases in the country when facing pressure amongst the nation against blitzes in the FBS. So this is a quarterback with all the storylines of the media darling to come in and try and be at home and knock off as the hometown, somewhat not exactly hometown kid, but the Tucson native to try and knock off the Bruins. We're feeling high and mighty off a dominant home win against Stanford to right the ship after the Oregon loss. And now the Bruins only their third true road game of the season, third of a total of four here in 2022 where UCLA can come through, and they're going to face some tough difficulties. Got to avoid the trap. This is the definite storylines of the makings of a trap game for UCLA football. And cynical fans would say, yep, this is the game where eh, they will choke it and blow the rest of their chances for a good ranking. Real good feeling about the season going into the postseason, whether it's a bowl game, a Pac-12 title game, whatever it may be. Technically, even with the loss, UCLA with two conference losses, if Utah loses to Oregon and UCLA beats SC, both those teams would have two losses and UCLA would have the tiebreaker and still technically have a chance to rematch against Oregon. But, you know, you'd rather do that riding high and beat the teams that you should, which the Bruins have done all season long. And the teams in front of you, you've got to beat them. The big makings of a trap game, but the Bruins are set to do so. We'll tell the mini tale of the tape. And something that ASU is good at, which maybe be a cause for concern for UCLA in this game. But first, let's tell you more about the likes of Simply Safe. With Simply Safe home security, we'll talk about it as we say, all right, you know, what's what's the what's going on with Simply Safe Simply Safe home security? We'll be like, all right, let's get to it. I'm trying to pull it up real quick, but Simply Safe home security. If you thought about securing your home with home security, but they've been putting it off, you want to listen up right now. Locked on UCLA listeners, you can order the number one rated Simply Safe home security system for over 50% off. This is their biggest offer of the year, and you won't want to miss it. If you're in an emergency, well, 24-7, prof- 24/7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe. They can capture critical evidence, verify the threat is real, and you can get priority police response. That, that's big. They've got a whole security system with advanced sensors in every room, home with every room, window, and door. There are HD security cameras. You can prove the threat is real and in, 
instantly detect fires, floods, and other threats to your home. 24-7 uh, security monitoring costs less than a dollar a day, and that's less than half the price of competitors like ADT. They've got top-rated apps. The Simply Safe app keeps you in complete control of your system. Don't miss your chance to save big on the only security system that you can get 50% off on the new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on college. Again, that's the biggest discount of the year. Don't miss it 50% off with the simplysafe.com slash locked on college. There's no safe like Simply Safe. All right. Well, the Bruins aren't exactly going to be safe on the road this week as they keep cooking towards Arizona State and take on the Sun Devils on the road. A trap game, to say the least. And ASU as a team can really poke some holes in the Bruins attack. They've found ways in recent weeks to score. Outside of that Stanford game ASU with the new, with Trenton Borgay, with everything working with them, they're a team that also can force turnovers. In their last 10 straight games, 15 of their last 16, they've been a team that's picked off the opponent, and they've been a team that's been able to force turnovers on the regular, being one of the best teams in the country over the last three seasons. As Arizona State's game notes likes to put it, despite playing a lot fewer games, of course, 2020, Pac-12 didn't play too much. They're not playing 15 games a year in 2021, and then here they are in 2022, closing just past the midway point, and ASU continues to be forcing turnovers at a game clip where the Bruins need to watch out, where if the offense is going for Arizona State, they're going, they're doing trick plays. We saw Washington get going quickly against the Bruins in the Rose Bowl, and then UCLA figured things out a little different in the atmosphere on the road. But overall, this is an ASU team that can force turnovers. Borgay gets it out quickly when facing. So when it comes to forcing turnovers, they force pressure. They're one of the top of the country. While they don't get a lot of sacks, they're one of the top 20 teams, near the top 20 in the FBS and group of five level in the FBS, where they get QB hits, QB hurries, which could potentially fluster Dorian Thompson Robinson. And they don't miss too many tackles. Only 16 missed tackles in the last four to five weeks combined for ASU. So this is a team that's been playing since coach was released with Herm Edwards of his head coaching duties. They've been playing a little bit cleaner football. Their offense has been gelling a bit more with getting the ball out quick with their former walk-on, I think, Richard Jr., Trenton Borgay, quarterback. And they've been forcing turnovers, which is what's mostly led them to a lot more competitive games in the likes of, all right, they beat Washington at home. Should have and could have beaten Stanford off the bye, but fell a little bit short after Stanford came back down eight at halftime without even scoring a touchdown, including, I believe, what, four field goals in the second half? Maybe not three of them, if I got my math wrong. Go to Boulder, get a win there, and then come home, still with an outside shot to get a bowl game, but this, outside the Arizona game, will make or break their season. So UCLA, one, has to avoid the turnover. And Dorian Thompson-Robinson was pretty much beat up a little bit in that Stanford game. Wasn't throwing efficiently. The Bruins seemed to be throwing it a bit longer, going for the more home run passing game, it seemed, against the Stanford Cardinal. Although they raced it, rushed it down the Stanford Cardinal's throat, just running the football against the pretty porous Stanford run defense. And while if you look at the tail of the tape, this isn't an offense that's going to quote unquote electrify you. This is an Arizona State team that's only got the eighth best scoring offense in the conference, ninth best scoring defense. They do allow 150 rushing yards per game. This is a team that's at maybe middle of the pack in terms of FBS, bottom of the pack 12. So there's not numbers that really scare you off in terms of, all right, this is an ASU team that can really stop the run that although overall they haven't scored, lately they've been scoring a lot more points, 40 points plus against Colorado and Washington after only a 14-point performance against Stanford. And this is where the we're kind of going off recency. A little bit different when they had to go to USC or got dominated at home by Utah or even the team that lost 30-21 to 21 at home to Eastern Michigan. They've been building and believing under the new interim head coaching regime with Sean Aguano, a former Arizona State or Arizona high school state level coaching legend. But overall, this is an ASU team that does get tacked for one of the most with uh, has the 
most penalized team in the Pac-12, one of the worst in the country, nearly bottom four, bottom three when it comes to penalty yards per game. And even though they force a lot of turnovers, they intercept you and they do that, they do have a negative turnover margin. But lately, they've been picking things up and they force pressure. They don't miss tackles. And while they don't have a lot of sacks, they can get to DTR and that can lead to an errant throw or two in a hostile road environment, as one should expect for UCLA against Arizona State. Well, the Bruins will have certainly their hands full in this trap game. Again, it's going to come down to can the Bruins get pressure on Trenton Bourget because he gets the ball out quick. They snap the ball quick. They've been going up tempo. Bourget facing pressure quickly gets it out about 1.95 seconds. Arizona State claims to say that Bourget can get it out. Boom, boom, boom. When facing the blitz, it's one of the fastest releases in the country. That's elite level quick, you know, in the college level, one should say, when facing blitzes. So can UCLA, if they're bringing pressure, get to the quarterback like they did against the the Stanford Cardinal last week with four sacks overall. We'll see. They might be in this face, but if Borgay gets it out and Arizona State leaks out with a big swing pass or a big play, well, then that's all for not. ASU can get pressure. If they sack DTR, that's not good because they don't have too many sacks. One of the worst teams in the Pac-12 in getting sacks, but they do pressure relentlessly and get your they get the quarterback a little flustered. Hits, hurries, are those two categories where they've been good. They just haven't been good at bringing down the quarterback in the backfield. Tacklers for loss have not been their strong suit for the Sun Devils. So UCLA shouldn't have to worry about that again. But most importantly, as the Bruins have done practically all year long, lean, lean, lean on the run game. Arizona State, not the best at defending the run, just like Stanford wasn't. Not as bad as the Cardinal, I believe. But UCLA should, again, feed Charbonnet. Feed Charbonnet, and if DTR is feeling good after though he looked a little banged up, have him run, leak out, maybe Keegan Jones, whatever it may be. We also saw Kaz Allen, that 72-yard burst against Stanford. Maybe we can see a lot of those big plays to really quiet the crowd and get UCLA going in the beginning in a truly hostile environment. The Bruins won't see until, well, even the Rose Bowl will be very hostile, maybe not towards the Bruins, but when SD comes to down, it'll be a very crazy atmosphere. This one should be a good pickup effect for UCLA to win one on the road in a trap game and get themselves feeling good moving towards the rest of the Pac-12 schedule. Get to 8-1 and one and possibly by the next rankings be in the top 10 depending on how things shake out. Alabama plays LSU so that team, one of those two teams is going to be bounced out or maybe UCLA go with iced out of the top 10. Either way UCLA, it's pressure and how to counteract that pressure well you can run the football and beat any QB hits. Don't turn it over and UCLA can avoid the trap. We'll get more keys to the game when it comes to this game for our Friday episode heading into the week and when we think how it's going to play out. In the meantime, we're going to talk some basketball and get excited about UCLA. Their first unofficial official start to the season was the way everything started. But for UCLA, you can't be... Too worried because you don't need to sweat out if it's an exhibition game. Let's tell you about sweat block. All right. You've dealt with embarrassing odor, underarm sweat. You know, I certainly have. I wear a lot of long sleeves, although not in this show. I wear a lot of long sleeves. I have to dress up for broadcasting. Well, if you're sitting on the plane when wearing a tie, like I have to, especially this weekend when I'm on the road traveling, it might be a little sweaty because you're sitting in, you know, long sleeves, suits, whatever it may be. I don't want to be stinky for everybody in the plane. Well, they have underarm wipes with sweat block. Sweat block underarm wipes. They are a secret to your confidence. The sweat block wipes work for up to seven days per use. You can apply them on Sunday and you will stay dry all week long. Oh boy, I can do that. Well, I guess I missed Sunday, right? So when I come back, I won't seek for next week. That's how the sweat block wipes work. If you're someone you love is experiencing embarrassing sweater odor, try sweat block. Save 20% off with the promo code locked on at sweatblock.com and use the sweat block wipes. You want to deal with the embarrassing odor or sweat, underarm sweat. We don't like dealing with that. No, we don't. All right, here we go. Final segment for Locked On UCLA. Let's get right to it. The Bruins, well, UCLA has been finding themselves, you know, building for the basketball season. As we've been talking about Jaime Hawkins Jr. lately, Tiger Campbell, all the eyes on the fabulous freshman for UCLA. Dumbono finally got his 
you know, public reveal. Abramo Zanka, the Italian old freshman coming through. Of course, Amari Bailey. Everybody kind of mixing in and getting some love for UCLA coming in and getting some action against Concordia. And now D2 program, not the NAIA program the Bruins faced 13 years ago the last time these two teams tangled in an exhibition. Today was against the D2 Golden Eagles of Concordia University from Irvine. And UCLA in Poly Pavilion last night, and a little bit of a reaction here. Very slow start. Very slow start. The Bruins, I believe, started 5 of 21 from the floor, really struggling despite leading for the entirety of the game from tip-off all the way to the end, UCLA struggled in the beginning to shoot and then shot after the 21st shot when they started 5 of 21. From the rest of the game, I think I saw, what, 34 for 52 approximately. They went sh shooting about 60% after that poor start and ran away with it, leading by as many as 32, winning it by a final of 93 to 63. And despite the poor shooting for the Bruins in the early going, UCLA still... Still, 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 still put up 45 first half points, scored 56 points of their paint, bullied their way against the Eagles, and dominated when they scored 23 points off of Golden Eagles, the Golden Eagles turnovers, forcing 17 turnovers. UCLA 11 steals, seven blocks. A Dembona leading UCLA in five block shots, and Jalen Clark with six steals. So the Bruins were active, I mean, absolutely active defensively against Concordia. And a lot of the big names for Mick Cronin's bunch played a lot in this 30-point blowout victory at home in Pauley Pavilion in the exhibition. I was kind of surprised to see Jaime Hawkins Jr. put in 32 minutes and over 32 and a half minutes of work. Even Tiger Campbell played 27 minutes, Bailey 26, Clark 27, Bona with 20 points, or 20 minutes, excuse me. So I was surprised that we didn't see a little bit more of Logan Kremenitsi, Evan Magikian, Jack Seidler, R Russell Strong. In such a blowout game when the Bruins overall shot 62% in the second half, dominating. Despite not the best three-point percentage, UCLA shot 5 of 22 from downtown with Singleton and Tiger Campbell combining to go 5 of 16 and even Jaime Hawkins Jr. going 0 for 3. But UCLA bullied their way in the paint, so I'm surprised why they rode Hawkins Jr. so long. I know you want to build up the stamina, and with the real home opener still about four days away, I guess I was shocked that they let him go for so long. But either way, UCLA pretty much dominated after they figured out how to score the basketball deep in the post. They were able to do that. Active hands defensively. Not the best free throw night shooting wise from the charity stripe. 14 of 21 overall. 66% from the field. For 66% shooting from the free throw line. 22% from downtown, but 50% for the game. So interesting enough, they didn't shoot the free throws at the best clip, although you make a couple more, that percentage looks a lot better. They didn't shoot threes good, and but still they scored 93 points. But even then, the Bruins led in scoring by Tiger Campbell and Jaime Hawkins Jr., both those two combining for 50 points, 25 apiece, Jalen Clark in double figures, David Singleton in double figures, and Dylan Andrews. Welcome back, Dylan Andrews. Come through in a big 13 minutes, 10 points, seeing him come through and score the basketball. Bravo Zonka getting 12 minutes. He had the least amount of minutes for guys who played double-digit minutes, and only Kremenissi with 20, Magic Kean, Seidler, and Strong combining to get about five minutes of action. So Dylan Andrews was 404 from the floor. He had 10 points. And the Bruins didn't have a single person. Of course, when you're not trailing, you don't, you know, when you don't trail the game, you don't have usually a negative plus minus. Nobody on the floor that took the floor for the Bruins had a plus minus lower than zero. And that even includes the guys coming off the bench late. Bona, and from all accounts, everybody thrilled from the athleticism from the youth for UCLA, athleticism, active hands, deflection, steals, blocks. They can be a force in the paint, a force on the perimeter with Jalen Clark getting steals. So that was nice. Albeit against Concordia, which UCLA should handle like they did. A team that wanted to come in, pull the upset, or at least make it close in the end like they did 13 years ago for a team in Concordia that went 13 and 13 last year. But with a team with a lot of their players, transfers from other schools, 
you know, D2 teams hit the transfer portal hard, just like Division I teams. UCLA comes through, says, all right, with their largely intact roster with either recruits or returners, the Bruins said, all right, they're coming together and had a nice night and dominated. It was nice to see that the Bruins largely looking good, and we can't wait for when the real thing happens when the Bruins take on Sacramento State, home opener November 7th, season opener November 7th, I guess with the doubleheader you have the UCLA women starting that night against the Cal Poly women uh, right before that one. So both the Hawkeyes, brother and sister Gabriela and Jaime playing back to back. So the Hawkeyes parents got to see Jaime play their alma mater. And then Jaime was able to thrash them completely with 25 points. Overall, we're excited. We'll see a lot of upside for the Bruins. But again, still with the youth, you have to give them some room for growing paint. As we saw, even against a an overmatched opponent, UCLA struggled to score the basketball early before figuring out it wasn't that hard, at least against the Eagles. That was, they just dominated with their size, athleticism down in the paint. Overall, the Bruins led in scoring Campbell with 25, Jaime Hawkins Jr. with 25, Jalen Clark with 11, Adem Bona only with two points, but still a lot of good things to see for UCLA. Eight turnovers overall, but 14 assists on 37 made shots. So and not a lot of assists leading to buckets, maybe some individual play, and we'll see if that changes. Overall, the Bruins looking good despite a sluggish start. Concordia, they were led in scoring by Lance Coleman II, who put in 23 points for the Eagles, although he had a minus 23. So 23 points, but his plus minus was minus 23 as well. Other than that, the Golden Eagles, Kobe Sanders at 14, Bryce Fitzgerald at 11. Those were the only guys into double figures. They only played eight guys trying to work through that rotation to keep up with the Bruins. But UCLA, even with the very poor start, still without being able to hit the three, which is what they apparently did in that closed-door scrimmage against San Diego State so well, couldn't do so against Concordia, which is interesting because if they're ice cold, UCLA is going to have to hit the paint, hit some mid-range jumpers, get easy buckets, and that's what they did with some adjustments and forced some turnovers. A lot of points, 20-plus off of the 17 turnovers forced, and UCLA looking good with the athleticism, defensively stout, and then they scored buckets when they needed to. Overall, it's an exhibition. Nice to see people get minutes. Would have liked to see the starters maybe play a little bit less minutes, but either way, Mick Cronin, he knows what he's doing, so who am I to question, at least for now, as he gets through and gets his team ready would technically, unofficially win number one, technically maybe win number two of this season, but the real win-loss counter, ticker, whatever it may be, that starts Monday against Sac State, November 7th in Poly Pavilion, 8.30 tip. Yeah, we'll have to stay up late for that one. We'll have our reaction late to that game Monday night. We'll talk about it. But in the meantime, UCLA gets the dub. Basketball's ready. Now let's see if the top 10, top 12 UCLA Bruins and Chip Kelly can go on the road and get that win against Arizona State. Pre-game coverage, our keys to the game tomorrow. Basketball, getting all excited for us. We'll talk about everything Bruins, basketball, and football on Locked On UCLA. In the meantime, go check out Locked On Sports today. They've got takes of the day, big score, big game recaps, biggest stories. Make that your second listen with Locked On Sports today. It's free wherever you get your podcasts. Go watch it, Locked On Sports today. Meantime, thanks for making Locked On UCLA your first listen. Go like, comment, subscribe. If you're not subscribed, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the support. This is Zach Anderson, Yoxheimer. We love it. How we're going to end the show as we always do. Let's rock and roll. Eight clap time. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You see LA. You see LA. Fight, fight, fight. Let's go. This has been Locked On UCLA. Go Bruins.